two pieces of scripture to guide our journey together tonight. The first in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. We begin at verse 23. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse, he considered abuse suffered for, for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, Moses left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger, for he persevered as though he saw him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so that, at, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were on dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the third chapter of the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, we hear more of the Exodus story. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. And God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. So have you ever walked into a room and forgotten why you walked into that room? I'm glad I'm not the only one. Or have you ever stood in front of the refrigerator door as it's standing wide open and thought, why do I have the refrigerator door open in the first place? Or maybe even better yet, there are times when I've occasionally been driving in my car and completely missed the turn that I was supposed to take because I was thinking about something else or had forgotten where in the heck I was supposed to be going. There are times in all of our lives when we come to a place or a situation and we're not quite sure how or why we got there. Or our theme for today in, our, in this continuing Wednesday Lenten worship series, Our Journey to the Promised Land, is focused on those seasons of our journey when we might feel a little puzzled maybe a little confused about our current location, our current situation, confused as to why we are where we are. We might be excited about this new place that God has placed us into, that we find ourselves in, but we're not quite sure why we're there, where this new place might be taking us and what the future might look like as the journey continues to unfold. In the part of the Exodus story that we just heard today, Moses comes across a bush 
that is on fire. Now, at this point in the story, he has removed himself from public life. He, he thinks of himself as kind of a failure. He's refrained and he's kind of removed himself from society. He's out tending his father-in-law Jethro's herd in order to not be seen or known by anyone. He's in this area of Midian, hoping that he can just hide out and live out the rest of his days without any more trouble. And wouldn't you know it, God had another plan. God wouldn't let Moses go. So high on the mountains, God set a bush on fire, to which most of us would probably walk by that bush and go, hey, so what? There's a bush on fire. No big deal. The problem with this bush is that it burns and burns and burns and never gets consumed by the fire. That's what got Moses' attention, just like it would get all of your attentions if the plant sitting on this altar table today suddenly burst out into flames and yet didn't get consumed by those flames. Moses turned toward the bush and out of the bush, God spoke. What might you say if God started speaking out of this plant today? Because I think God is speaking to you today, although if God starts speaking out of this plant, we should maybe make an appointment with one another for a later date, okay? <laughs> maybe though, Moses, God is speaking to you through the sermon today or, or, or through a song that we sing together during worship or maybe through a neighbor that's sitting next to you tonight or maybe through a neighbor that was sitting next to you as you ate dinner tonight or will eat dinner after worship tonight. God is speaking to you. Will you try and hide from that voice? Or like Moses eventually did, will you stop and pay attention to it finally? After all, something has caused you to turn from whatever it was that you were doing earlier in this day in order to be able to sit in this holy space for a few minutes of worship together as a community tonight. I know for a fact that for all of us sitting here, 5.30 on Wednesday evenings is not your normal worship time. If it is, we have to talk about that too because we don't worship on Wednesdays at 5.30 usually. But something has caused you or someone has invited you to be here tonight. And as crazy and as confusing as that might sound for many of us, what's even more spectacular about this time of worship right now is that the ground your feet are touching is holy ground. Moses might have been a little puzzled or unsure at what was happening or why it was happening when God came to him yet again, but God was with him, and God reminded him who God was, and God also let Moses know and see that the ground he was standing on was holy ground. Pastor Eugene Peterson, in a monumental and transformational book called Christ Plays in 10,000 Places, wrote this. Moses, Pastor Eugene says, is not a model placed above us to strive toward, but a companion who shows us what it means to keep our feet on this ground where God works savingly in the people and circumstances that make up the piece of history that we find ourselves in. So what piece of history do you find yourself in? When I think of burning bush moments in my life that have helped remind me that every experience in life is done on holy ground, I can't help but think of September 23rd, 1995, on the steps of the Custer House at Fort Abraham Lincoln State Park. That's the day God breathed into the prairie winds as a nervous young couple stood before others and exchanged their vows and promises to love and support that couple were offered and made by family and friends and God. And nearly 25 years later, the ground that couple continues to walk on is holy ground. That day was a burning bush moment for a young couple named Wendy and Craig that changed their lives forever. Or I think of May 2001 in a long hallway of the birth center at St. Alexis Medical Center. That's the day God's breath first cried out as two little girls were carried at breakneck speed by gifted nurses while a scared-to-death dad ran close behind to the NICU unit. 
And for nearly 19 years, those scared and confused parents in the wake of their twin daughter's early arrival into this world have stood on holy ground. Holy ground is their baby girls who weighed little more than eight pounds combined at birth have grown into beautiful young women. Young women who are now beginning to stand on holy ground on their own as they slowly start to leave the nest of their parents in order to experience burning bush moments in their own life. Or I think of the 43 families on the outer edge of a little prairie town called Bismarck who listened to God speaking to them and God's voice saying to them that they must plant a church, a church that has confidently stood on holy ground on the corner of Washington and Divide for nearly six decades now, a church called Good Shepherd Lutheran Church that God has grown to become one of the largest Lutheran congregations in the United States, a church who for the past three years has intentionally set aside time to listen to God's voice speaking in order to understand more fully the holy ground God will place in front of them and before them for the next 60 years of their life together. Tens of thousands of people in our community and around the world have experienced burning bush moments of blessing because God decided Bismarck needed a church like Good Shepherd to exist. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what are the burning bush moments that you find along your faith journey? Sometimes they're going to be moments like walking into the room and having absolutely no idea why you walked into that room. Or moments that leave you confused and unsure as to what you're supposed to do next or where you're supposed to go or why these moments are even happening to you. In all of those moments, may you hear God say to you, I am the God of your Father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And may that same God remind you that the ground you are standing on every second of your life is holy ground. And may we never forget that you and I stand on holy ground. And as we do that, God promises to stand there with us forever. Amen.